Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back after the lunch break. We hope that you relished the delightful cuisines that were served today. So after the sumptuous meals that all of us enjoyed, we are back here and ready to dive into the next session, which is on digitization of sugar sector, bringing synergy among stakeholders. The moderator for this session is Mr. Suresh Srinivasan, MD, EID Parry Limited. Please join hands in welcoming Mr. Suresh Srinivasan on the dais. Mr. Suresh is the Managing Director of EID Parry India Limited, part of Murugappa Group, with over 30 years of experience in manufacturing, supply chain, sales, marketing and business turnarounds. He joined the group in 2014. Mr. Suresh previously led the dairy business at Kevin Care and worked Britannia Industries. Under his leadership, EID Parry has achieved significant growth, earning him the Best CEO in Agri and Allied Sector Award by Business Today in 2023. We welcome you, sir. We welcome Ms. Ruchika Gupta, Advisor, Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, to kindly please join us on the day. Ladies and gentlemen, let's join hands in welcoming Ms. Ruchika Gupta. She has over 20 years of rich experience in executive leadership, strategic planning and management in the field of statistics in government sector. She leads the Digital Crop Survey, which is a transformational project for digitization of agriculture sector. We welcome you, ma'am. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be inviting Mr. Pratip Basu, CEO Satcho Analytics India Private Limited to join us. Join your hands in welcoming Mr. Pratip on the dais. He's the founder and chief executive officer at Satcho, a space tech and AI startup based out of Bengaluru. Mr. Basu has 13 years of space industry experience across both the business and technology front. An aerospace engineer from the Indian Institute of Space, Science and Technology, Trivandrum, he started his career as a liquid propulsion systems engineer in ISRO and has worked as a global earth observation industry consultant prior to starting Satcho. We welcome you. We welcome Dr. Anusha Kothandaraman, Vice President and Head, FES Strategy and Precision Farming Mahindra Tractors to please join us. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Dr. Anusha on the days. Can we have a round of applause? She's currently Head of Strategy and Precision Farming for Mahindra's farm equipment sector. In this role, she also oversees Carnot Technologies, a majority Mahindra owns startup which focuses on AI and IoT applications in agriculture. Prior to this role, Anusha was Vice President Group Strategy at Mahindra, where she worked on priority growth initiatives across the Mahindra Group. She holds a PhD in Chemical Engineering from MIT and an MBA from the MIT Sloan School of Management. We welcome you. Ladies and gentlemen, now we welcome Mr. Deepak Balani, DG ISMA, to please join us on this day. Mr. Deepak Balani, as Director General of ISMA, brings about 25 years of expertise in public policy, government affairs and organizational management. He spearheads growth and innovation in the sugar and bioenergy sectors, particularly amid changing ethanol and bioenergy policies aimed at enhancing India's energy security and reducing import reliance. His career spans roles at PwC, India, Unido, NSIC, focusing on energy efficiency, technology transfer, and international business development. We welcome you. With this, may I uh, once again welcome each of our panelists on the dais and request the moderator to kindly please begin the deliberations. Sir. So, good afternoon, everyone. I would like to set a preamble for this uh, session. As you all know, India is undergoing a major digital transformation. Various digital innovation and techniques are increasingly shaping the life of people on a daily basis for the betterment. In May two th 2024 alone, we could see more than 452 million UPI transactions averaging almost $8 billion per day. That is the extent of digital transactions on UPI alone. Low data charges across uh, various service providers have enabled mobile phone usage by more than 860 million people, including farmers, both in, as well as in urban areas. Heart of all this is the Jam Trinity, which is the Jandan Adar, 
and mobile interconnection, a digital infrastructure that has set global benchmarks. The digital public infrastructure that manages the payment data is accessible across sectors, promoting innovation and also broad-based inclusive growth. Digitization, in my view, is bringing about a tectonic shift in agri and farming sectors. By, as you all know, by integrating digital technology and allied innovations, there is going to be all-round improvement in productivity and efficiency, and agriculture is going to be no exception. Government of India, under the able leadership of our Honorable Prime Minister, is undertaking multiple steps in this regard. In this afternoon, let's hear from our experts, experts how digitization can enable synergy across various stakeholders. First, let me invite uh, Ms. Ruchika Gupta, Advisor, Ministry of Agriculture and Farmer Welfare, to enlighten us on how the government is building an enabling digital ecosystem. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you. A very good afternoon to ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Suresh has uh, already set uh, a tone uh, for this uh, whole session, which is going to follow uh, now. So, uh, next. I mean, okay. So, uh, this is basically Ministry of Agriculture right now is taking many of the initiatives uh, to build the digital public infrastructure in agriculture. And uh, one of uh, that uh, major initiative is the AgriStack, uh, which uh, we started uh, on pilot basis last year, and now we are in a, a way to roll it out across the country. And the major uh, thing which the AgriStack will do is uh, one of the thing is that farmer registry. Farmer registry uh, means main three components of the AgriStack is the farmer registry digital uh, crop zone registry, as well as the georeferencing of village map. These three are the pillars of that whole agri stack, along with uh, many other things. So like uh, we can see that farmer registry is the main thing. What we are doing in this particular farmer registry, we are creating an identity for each and every farmer. I mean, behind there is the Aadhaar, but front for the transaction, for uh, giving the benefits to the scheme, for uh, sharing the data, for everything, we are creating a farmer ID for each and every farmer in the country. And what we are doing with that farmer ID, we are linking the land record of the farmer. I mean, there is a record of right in the country for uh, in the each state, and the state is maintaining that. So that uh, on every farmer's name owning the land is there in the record of right. So what we are doing, that we are connecting the land record of the farmer with their farmer ID. So when we have the farmer ID, we know what are the lands that farmer owns, maybe in that state or in any other state also, because with that farmer ID we can connect to all is land holding. Thirdly, that crop. So what crop farmer grows in each and every season? Mainly there are three seasons in the country, like uh, that we call it Kharif, Rabi, and uh, Summer or Jayat. So what crop is grown on that particular parcel of land which the farmer owns? That also we are connecting in this farmer ID. So with this one farmer ID, we do have three information. Who is the farmer? Where is his or her land? And what crop is grown on that particular parcel of land which he or he, she is owning? So these three basic information is uh, opening a plethora of uh, uh, I mean, initiatives or plethora of uh, I mean, uh, solution which can be developed, the uh, schemes benefit which can be given to the farmer. All those can be, because these things are the basic thing for the agriculture sector. And if we can uh, have the digitalization of these three things, we can uh, open up lots of avenues for the benefit of the farmers through various solutions by the private sector, by the government sector. Everyone can use this and uh, use this data. So, uh, other than that, uh, for productivity, I mean, this, uh, since we do have the crop zone area through the digital crop survey, 
So this will uh, somehow will give uh, another uh, advantage that uh, area will be known so for each crop. Let's say how, in much, uh, how much area paddy is grown, in uh, what how much area that sugar cane is uh, sown, all those area would be known. So secondly, what we are doing uh, to link it with, suppose we want to have that pro total production of the country. So other than the area, we do require the yield also, that what is the productivity per hectare. If uh, that uh, information is also available, then we will have uh, a good estimate of the uh, crop production in the country. Let's take the example of sugarcane itself. So if we have the area from this agri-stack project, then we also require that yield uh, to have the robust forecast of that uh, sugarcane production in the country. So what the, what, for that, what we have done, we have taken another new initiatives. Uh, that is, uh, if you are aware that crop cutting experiment uh, was undertaken, is being undertaken to assess the yield of the crop. So that's the age old system. What we have done, we have digitalized that part also. So now uh, the whole process of conducting the crop cutting experiment is uh, also, I mean, geolocated, where the crop cutting experiment is undertaken, that is there available on the geolocation, everything. And the system uh, provides the yield on a real time basis as soon as the crop cutting experiment is conducted. So uh, as many as number of crop cutting experiment is done, so immediately we get the yield. And that uh, ensures the transparency that whether, and then there was a question that uh, whether the crop cutting experiment is at all conducted or not, whether anybody is going in the field or not. So all these questions can be answered if this whole uh, process is digitized and transparent. So even right now we can see wherever the crop cutting experiment has been conducted in the country, wherever it has been planned, where it is going on, what is the yield with, let's say there are uh, 5,000 crop cutting experiment plan, until now 2,000 experiment has been done. So what is the yield on the basis of those 2,000 experiment, on the basis of 3,000, so that information is available on the uh, real time basis and anybody can check. Uh, with that particular parcel of land, whether sugarcane was there or let's say paddy was there or wheat or there. So that kind of information is also connected. So that's another uh, thing uh, which we are doing in the digital, this uh, for whole digitalization of the agriculture sector. Thirdly, what we are doing that soil analysis. Right now also we are doing that uh, soil profiling. What is the uh, type of soil? What is its uh, quali uh, quality? Everything uh, is done in an isolated manner. Something is available at one place, something is available at another place. So one is to 20,000 uh, scale it is done. So what we are doing, we are uh, integrating everything and the whole country's soil profile is being prepared. That is also being done under Krishi decision support system. That's a project, uh, another project and another DPI, uh, Digital Public Infrastructure, which has been uh, initiated by the Ministry of Agriculture. So under that, we will have the whole country's soil profiling and what type of soil it is, what uh, for what type of uh, crop it is suitable. Everything is available, then we can take, uh, I mean, farmer can take uh, uh, decision according to that his need, or government can take decision what kind of crop is suitable, what to promote there. Something like that can also be associated. So we do have the crop information, we do have the soil information with this. Similarly, that uh, fertilizer, what fertilizer uh, farmer uses. So that kind of system is also being developed separately. That whole uh, uh, inter fertilizer management system, what kind of fertilizer uh, is available, what is the nearest market, all those things are also uh, being developed separately and all these things will be integrated. So have a complete uh, picture of the uh, whole agriculture sector. Then weather data for uh, assessing the crop situation, whether any adversity is there or even if we want to have uh, that some uh, yield or productivity through some model that also requires the weather forecasting or weather parameter. So for that also we have taken a win initiative that is wind a weather information uh, distribution system network. So under that winds project, what the Ministry of Agriculture is doing, they are supporting the state to install the weather stations. So because right now the limitation is that the IMD is also not able to provide the granular level forecast or granular level estimate because of that limitation of the number of weather stations. So that also we have taken an initiative and uh, we have created a system of winds on which the weather data from various stations, 
would be available and IMD can use it for its uh, forecast and other stakeholder can also take that data for wherever if they require that uh, data for model or any other things. So that is also available in a standardized manner. So ministry is working on uh, that also. So Krishi DSS as I told it is a repository basically of all the geospatial data. So all the satellite data would be there, soil data would be there, weather data would be there reservoir, what, wherever the reservoir is there. So everything is available at one place under Krishi Decision Support System. So Krishi Decision Support System along with AgriStack and other initiatives will give a complete picture of the agriculture sector and we can take several policy decisions, whatever is required for the benefit of the farmer, for the benefit of the sector, that kind of initiative. So now uh, the question arises whether uh, that involves uh, animal husbandry and fisheries or not. So this system is there. Right now we are starting with the land. Later on the system has the flexibility and the system is, uh, can take that uh, can connect the animals the farmer are taking fishery sector also can be associated with this agri stack. That's the long term vision that has also been thought of uh, while uh, preparing the agri stack design fisheries, livestock, and what kind of pesticide farmer use. So that also we are developing separately, what kind of pests are available for what crop, what farmer is using. Those kind of information is also being developed through separate, separate registries. And the different FPOs, everyone is, I mean, all the stakeholders, central government, state government, FPOs, and uh, all the other central ministries which are the part of this uh, like uh, DFPD, DOCA, all those ministries are the stakeholders of this whole uh, initiatives which has been taken. Yeah, next. Oh, sorry. So how this whole uh, initiative which uh, we have uh, taken, how it can help the sugar sector. So as I told that uh, one of the major uh, initiatives under this agri stack project is crop zone registry crop zone registry is nothing but the crop sown by the farmer in different season on its land his or her land parcel so that will be done through a digital crop survey which uh, earlier right now also we are doing through girdavari that many of the state is doing girdavari to assess the uh, crop area in various feed parcel so digital crop survey is the digitalized version, I can say, of that Girdavari in which mm, it is ensured that somebody is, has been to the field and because they will have to take the photograph in the field. And secondly, the system doesn't work until unless the person goes to that field because the whole uh, village map is georeferenced. So for each and every land parcel is georeferenced. So that's what we can see. So until unless a person goes to that particular field, they cannot take the picture and they cannot uh, collect the information. So that ensures the quality of the data and after uh, taking the photograph, after uh, taking the data into the system, there is a system of approval and with, with the uh, photo and we can, uh, I mean, uh, we are trying to deploy AI over it also that whether that picture uh, and the crop name is matching with what AI is telling with that picture. So lots of things can be, this is the basic thing and lots of things can be done over it. So digital crop survey uh, for sugarcane, we can say that uh, the whole area which has been covered through the sugarcane, that can be uh, taken from the digital crop survey. And all the major states has come on board like sugarcane, like UP uh, is doing it. UP did uh, that whole digital crop survey in the last uh, Rabi. And now they are also continuing from this Kharif so Maharashtra is also doing it on a full scale basis. So, so what we will have, we will have that area on a real time basis. What is uh, the total sugarcane area as of uh, that uh, whole crop survey duration is of uh, 45 days. So after that 45 days or even within that, with the progress, we do know what is the sowing, uh, what is the sown area of the particular crop in that uh, fashion. And this information is coupled with the photograph. So we know that this particular crop is the sugarcane. So that kind of truthful information is there. So sowing date also is being captured in the digital crop survey. These are the basic information which are being captured in the digital crop survey. What is the sowing date? What is the crop area? And there are two types of sugarcane as we know that fresh plantation and the ratoon. So uh, the system has the flexibility to uh, capture both the things 
that fresh plantation and at the time of Rathun the surveyor can again go and survey the Rathun uh, also. Crop area under each of that fresh plantation at Vedlila Rathun so that can also be available. It is linked with the land parcel and at photograph as a proof also. So and secondly this will give the this whole system will give the area and as I told since we have digitalized the whole system of the crop cutting experiment also. So this ne next is the uh, crop cutting experiment through that crop cutting experiment that uh, we get the yield of that particular uh, plot on a real time basis. So area coupled with the yield will give us the more robust uh, production estimate and that too on our uh, means we do not need to wait for a longer time to get the final estimate because as soon as the crop cutting experiment is conducted we can have that uh, complete picture otherwise with the area and taking some estimates we can also come up with a certain uh, estimates of the uh, sugarcane uh, production in the country. Secondly then if we know wherever that uh, sugarcane is growing what are the main area uh, which is the higher area, lowest, lower area. So we can plan accordingly for the sugar mills. Then uh, we can identify ki which, uh, what are the intervention needed to incentivize the system, incentivize the production or other things at the state level, at the village, village or district level for that uh, betterment of the sugar industry. And thirdly, since we have everything on geo tag, so we uh, can see that whole thing by sitting here only, we can monitor everything, where, uh, where the crop cutting experiment is undergoing, what is the area, let's say up till now that much area has come up. All these information uh, is available on the real time basis. So this is basically uh, on the basis of field survey. Next. So secondly, this, this last part is somebody is going to the field and collecting the data center, which is uh, one of the uh, partner attached office of the Ministry of Agriculture. So we have taken lots of steps to improve that. We have engaged with some private companies also to do the remote sensing based crop mapping on our behalf for a selected crop. For sugarcane also, we are, sugarcane is one of the crop which we are doing for the, through the remote sensing also. So, and uh, we have uh, uh, improved that ground truth data which we collect. So we are uh, trying to develop the mechanism so as to collect more and more number of ground truth data and the digital crop survey data which actually uh, we have the parcel wise information that will also be used for ground truthing of this uh, remote sensing capabilities. So over and above uh, in a few years let's say in the next uh, four five years that uh, our remote sensing capabilities will also be improved with the data which we are capturing through the digital crop survey and our reliance on digital crop survey will be uh, I mean lower uh, day by day so as soon as the system develops so we are trying both way like doing the field survey as well as uh, extend, uh, enhancing the remote sensing capabilities and for this that uh, Krishi decision support system which we are developing on that everything uh, is available that crop maps of the sugarcane wherever the pockets everything uh, is we are mapping and uh, trying to improve the gr ground truth so that our mapping the crop mapping is accurate as accurate as possible so we are achieving that more than 90 percent accuracy should be there uh, for every crop so right now paddy and wheat we do have certain accuracy so we are trying to do that for sugarcane sugar cane and other crops also so that kind and uh, GT library, all those things are available on the Krishi decision support system. Other than that, uh, we have in the Ministry of Agriculture uh, de developed a system of integrated command control center where we can monitor these things on uh, whatever is uh, happening in the ground. So that can be visible. Uh, where uh, is the crop cutting? What is the ground truthing? As of now, what is the crop maps? All those things would be available in the, that uh, integrated command uh, control center. So ultimately when we do have the better uh, production data, we do know who are the farmers who are actually growing the sugarcane because AgriStack is giving the whole uh, chain that who is the farmer, its land and what is grown on that particular crop. So we do know who is the farmer who has actually grown the sugarcane. So accordingly we can plan the better procurement system with these three, farmer registry, 
uh, field data and remote sensing. So we can uh, incentivize the farmer, sugarcane procurement from farmer as per the what they have grown, not only for sugarcane. Suppose it is the, for some uh, pulses uh, procurement, then also we do know who are the farmer who have actually grown. It's not by per se what they are saying or what the patwari is saying, it's actually with the proof that the farmer, that particular farmer has grown this particular thing. So that uh, it's a procurement and uh, it's a transparent uh, mechanism, it will be faster because we do not need to go and check whether actually that has uh, been grown on the field or not. And uh, that's how, I mean, these are the opportunities which is available through the agri stack and uh, the sugar sector can converge with the uh, agri stack and other initiatives which has been, which are being undertaken by the Ministry of Agriculture and we can develop many, many more uh, opportunities for convergence. Thank you. Thank you ma'am for uh, painting a good canvas on new thinking and possibilities with a definite action plan for the agri sector. It has been extremely well articulated. Uh, it is also indeed heartening to see that the ministry is proactively driving various initiatives for the agri sector. One question to you, ma'am, before we go to the panelists, uh, just to understand, when you say uh, uh, the 90% accuracy, how do you validate that? Uh, because normally you do as have remote sensing and then you say go on the field. Uh, how the validation process happens? Actually, I am not the remote sensing but expert, but uh, uh, as I know, because we keep close interaction with the MNCFC, so that accuracy and he, Pratik, Mr. Pratik, must be uh, more... Uh, we do check through that, uh, what is the ground truth, what that ground truth data, what they are telling, and what our remote sensing is telling, so how much is the matching there? With that, the uh, accuracy is measured. Sure. And Major. over a period, is there a scope to take it up to 99% Yes, yes. Uh, right now, uh, I mean, uh, for sugar cane, it is around 90%. 90%. For paddy okay. and wheat, it is 95%. So more and more ground truth and good ground truth data. Because uh, the requirement, uh, Mr. Pratik might be knowing, that yeah. requirement for remote sensing is a good, good ground truth data and spectral libraries. So with that digital crop survey, which we are doing, we will have the good ground truth data. Other than that also, separately, we are uh, coming up with the separate initiatives to have the good ground truth data. So as soon as our spectral libraries are improved, so that remote sensing capabilities, uh, the identification of crop through remote sensing, that will also increase. Uh, thank you, ma'am, because uh, I thought it will be more pertinent. Uh, the reason being this data inputs are going to be the base for so many policy level decisions, hence the question. Thank you. Now I would like to uh, ask uh, two questions to Mr. Deepak Ji. Uh, sugarcane, as you know, it is uh, spread across so many million acres, done by so many million farmers. Also being an energy source and government uh, would like to have a, a good level of accurate input um, for the national level decision making. Uh, particularly in sugarcane as related to how much to divert to ethanol, how much to import or export depending on the sugar availability. Uh, and government has been very adept in terms of taking such crucial decisions in timely manner. How ISMA is facilitating uh, the same by leveraging the digital information? That is question number one. Maybe if I can just put the second question also to you, an allied question. Um, what are the other digital tools uh, which uh, the stakeholders in the sugar industry whether it is farmers or whether it is the mills or other relevant stakeholders can embrace for better productivity and efficiency. Oh, uh, to you, thank sir. you, thank you, Suresh. First of all, my compliments to Madam Ruchika. I think wonderful presentation, and also compliments to Government of India for launching this AgriTech. I think this is going to have a digital revolution in the entire ecosystem of farmers. I think after this is fully operational, this is going to really help all the farmers the entire stakeholders. This topic itself is a very uh, interesting topic for me because I started 32 years back as an IT engineer in TCS, which is one of the largest IT companies. And I'm exactly started as developing this app and platforms. So it is heartening to see that we have now come to the level where it is going to the level of farmers. And uh, 
the second thing uh, as a child i basically come from a farmer community my father was himself a farmer and uh, ancestors have done the farming and i know the kind of challenges which we, which we saw when we were children that lack of information lack of in, uh, coordination and lack of real time data i think had these technology been there at that time maybe 30 40 years back today i would have continued to be a farmer and not here <laughs> so wonderful to see that see uh, isma has been uh, conducting uh, various uh, crop estimation using satellite imaging for last so many years and we have been, like the technology even the digital technology has been evolving so our technology our methodology is also evolving so basically in fact last year you know whatever the problem we saw had it been the scientific method of verifying because the first data which isma brought and that was based on the complete satellite imaging the image processing and also the gis software mapping our estimate ultimately came to this exactly same what the actual production was so it is very essential if we have the digital technology we also have to trust that kind of a technology i think that is very essential we have we have done uh, in fact last year we also uh, included yield assessment in our method we have basically built in through our uh, agencies we have building a yield model which basically refers to a complete historical 10 to 12 years of data and that is based on the solid machine learning software so that also now in in addition to the acreage in addition to the area it also gives us the kind of yield which you are going to have which results in a very proper estimate of production and that becomes or that should become the benchmark for any policy decision because it is based on the solid fact and the technology because we are using the cameras on the satellite we are also using a very a uh, high resolution so we are our images are taken from 8 to 10 meters of the crop we all know that the crop identification can be done because every crop has a they have a chlorophyll which is emitted in a, the light is emitted in the infrared and that is how it is cap captured so going forward we are also planning to introduce more things for example artificial intelligence how we can really integrate assessment or measurement of soil moisture and integrate to our uh, system so that we have even better estimates going forward so this is how we are doing i think we will continue to evolve because technology is evolving we will make it better and better and going forward i think we can come out with various other parameters apart from production estimate going to your second question what next i think uh, we can look at as i was just mentioning iot and sensor technology where we can have uh sensors to measure the soil moisture which can really help both the farmer and also the cane management team in the mills so that we can be help we can reach to the farmer if in case the soil moisture goes down below a threshold value so that is something which we can look for the second we can also go ahead and say the blockchain blockchain is not only for basically for transparency or traceability it will also help us in supply chain management we have seen the issues in decant the supply logistic issues i think if we implement the blockchain technology in the entire ecosystem the value streams i think we'll be able to solve major issues in the logistic and supply chain we have also been uh, advocating for some kind of a national sugar dashboard we still don't have a real time dashboard i think we need a dashboard where isma the government central government state governments the entire stakeholders could be there so that we have the real time data on the dashboard which becomes kind of a decision management support system for the government so i think these are some of the tools which we must continue to implement and i think uh, there is a, a lot of things to do as far as the digital technology is concerned and isma will be facilitating this will be working with the millers with the government to make sure that this is done for the industry Thank you, Deepak Ji. Uh, now the question is to uh, Mr. Anusha. Your organization has been pioneering lot of uh, digital services 
as related to farm sector. Could you please share something related to how it is being done for sugarcane crop monitoring as well as for recovery improvement? Are there any techniques which are being deployed at the field level? Sure. Um, thank you, sir, for the question. Um, so I think what we have done is, um, you know, uh, similar to what Ms. Ruchika talked about, it's a very comprehensive program that the government is, uh, I think, uh, pioneering and great to see that you know industry bodies like ISMA are also supporting that. Um, what we are doing is using satellite imagery, weather data, as well as you know ground truth, um, ground truthing data like you talked about. Uh, we've come up with a suite of solutions for both farmers as well as the mills, right? So on the farmer side, I think it starts with um, uh, automatic field boundary detection in a very simple way using an app on a mobile phone, right? So that you get very accurate field boundaries, which then form the basis for any intervention um, that you do. The second product is related to advisory. So getting the farmer to use digital advisory in terms of the inputs that should be applied, um, the time at which those inputs should be applied, as well as mechanization in order to maximize the productivity or the yield from that field. That's another area of focus um, for us. The third one is around uh, crop stress. Using satellite uh, data again and you know machine learning algorithms, we can tell which field uh, in a catchment area is stressed, which either due to pests or lack of water or fertilizer, it allows the farmer and the mill to do targeted intervention you know, on that field. Uh, from a mill perspective, it starts with identifying what is the area under sugarcane cultivation, right? so that it helps them in starting to plan their operation. We can also tell them which uh, crops are you know, in the other areas, so that in the future, if needed, those can be also um, cultivated with sugarcane. That's the first one. Um, the second one in, is as the crop grows, again, the crop stress one that I talked about. The third one is related to yield. Again, you know, I think uh, crushing capacity has increased quite a bit, but acreage under sugarcane has not gone up, right? So mills are always looking at ways to optimize um, their crushing season. And I think, you know, getting estimates of yield upfront in the season as well during the season will help mills with optimizing their planning. So that's the third product that we look at. The fourth one is very interesting. It is uh, related to recovery improvement. So, you know, a lot of mills will uh, harvest sugarcane based on the planting date. Uh, but our algorithm allows them to maximize sugar recovery. So we can give a harvesting program which will tell you which sugarcane plot has reached uh, maturity. And so then when you harvest in that way, um, it allows you to maximize the sugar recovery. So that is the fourth one which is uh, related to recovery. Uh, thank you. And uh, a follow-up question on that is, uh, sugar industry as such is capital intensive. I jokingly say it is like selling tea in a railway station. If they, as and when it stops only, you'll be able to sell. You are not running for all the 12 months in a year. You have to run for three months or four months or five months, depending on this. It is very capital intensive as well. And any technological intervention will require investments. We have technologies going to the farm. It is like taking the horse to the water. Uh, how do we make it drink? How do we make the technology to work? And what are the enablers from your experience uh, to make all the stakeholders believe, yes, there is some deliverable out of these technologies? Any thoughts uh, from your side will help. Yes, this is something that we've actually, you know, I think struggled with quite a bit and, and learned a few lessons. Uh, for the Indian farmer, seeing is believing, right? So we, do, we have seen that a purely digital model, especially when it comes to advisory and so on, doesn't work. Um, so what we've done is a digital model, combination of physical and digital. It starts with going to different villages, finding progressive farmers, right, who are willing to adopt some of these um, um, advisory techniques that we give them and demonstrating it on the ground, right? So over the last six years, multiple seasons, we've done what we call 20,000 technique plots, where we demonstrate the value, you know, of using different types of inputs, mechanization and so on. And we've seen 5,000 to 15,000 rupees per acre improvement in income for the farmer. Once you demonstrate this in the village, 
you can then around that do a lot of digital plots, you know, because the farmer has seen it on his neighbor's field. So he's then more willing to adopt the digital advisory that you give him, right? So it's a combination of physical and digital. The other thing is for the farmer, the app has to be very, very intuitively designed, right? So uh, very, very simple to use and it has to be very bite-sized and only targeting those kind of interventions. Um, so we think of digital model where, you know, they can also see it in action is very critical. And the same goes for the mills as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Anusha, ma'am. And uh, now I'll move over to Pradeep ji. Farmers are very adaptive to the various uh, new tools and techniques. For a simple reason, uh, they will be always looking for any uh, yield improvement uh, so that their livelihood improves. So they are very adaptable. Um, and you, I understand your company has been doing a lot of good work with AgriStack as the base. The question here is, today with the evolution of the digital public infrastructure and the evolution of the digital ecosystem, one can get any loan. At the press of a button, they will come and deliver the check to you, except for the farm loan. So farm credit is something which is going, taking a huge amount of time. Uh, can you throw some light on any work which is being done by you in terms of how are we simplifying this entire process? We talked about, uh, ma'am talked about the farmer database. Um, there is a lot of things are going to be digitally available. Are we integrating that and trying to work on some easier lending uh, procedure for the farmers? Can you please throw some light on that? Thank you, sir. That's a great question. Indeed, uh, <clears throat> at Satchar, uh, since beginning, uh, we had been very focused on serving two types of customers, government and uh, banks. So we have been involved in uh, several programs, uh, even the uh, UP uh, AgriStack uh, thing that ma'am mentioned, we are one of the partners uh, there. However, uh, the problem for a government which is more around uh, getting the statistics right and then improving the governance is very different than uh, for a bank who is supposed to be lending to a farmer. So let, like for the benefit of everyone, I'll define the problem here. Uh, so people like us, we can, we keep getting all loan offers, personal loan, home loan on our phone, WhatsApp, et cetera, right? That never happens to a farmer. They have to actually wait for many, many days. If it's a new loan, it can be 30 to 45 days even. And renewals, even renewals take, uh, you know, 15, 10 to 15 days. Why is that? Because the entire system is the process of evaluating the loan was completely physical. So the first and foremost thing to get to a digital journey was how do you, how can you assess who is this farmer? Where is their uh, land? Does it belong to him or her or you know, sh how is it shared? What crop do they grow? Uh, and uh, what are the parameters that are uh, leading to risk? <coughs> now, um, everything that uh, other panelists have spoken, whether it is uh, identifying the crop, identifying irrigation, water availability, we have to do it at a farm level. Now imagine uh, taking images from satellite uh, where you have millions of pixels and then taking one hectare farm, which is like the average farm size in India. So it's like a needle in a haystack. So that is the power of what uh, AI you have to develop. But what it did is that 30 days became 30 minutes. Today, uh, we are at the very early stage of transformation of farm, uh, farm credit, uh, where you know, our company has been working with several banks, including Reserve Bank's Innovation Hub. Uh, and uh, you know, until now, and since last two years, as we piloted and scaled, about 2 million farm loans have been uh, provided on this digital journey. However, this digital journey is not yet fully available because you know, we, are, uh, uh, we do not have this integrated land records and farm records and farm ID. And I think this is where the big push of AgriStack will come. Uh, we have to appreciate that India is a big country, so a lot of initiatives keep going. But it's, there is a convergence happening, and I see that uh, it will impact uh, everyone. Indeed, out of this uh, you know, 2, 2.5 million uh, loans that we have enabled in the last couple of years, uh, about 337,000 were uh, sugarcane farmers. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Maybe a follow-up question on that will be, uh, are there any other digital tools and interventions which can add further value and uh, help to the sugar industry as such? Absolutely, sir. I think uh, uh, we need to look at what are the problems that we are uh, solving for the sugar industry. From our experience, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, seen that uh, being Sim simple, simple things. Sometimes, like just improve the supply chain, optimize it uh, here. How can you do more with the same number of people? AI should AI and all digital tools should be seen as assistance to human, not replacement. So, uh, 
identifying low yielding versus high yielding sugar uh, farms on a season to season basis and focusing your advisory uh, support uh, to the farmers in season directed towards the low yielding farmers so that you can you know support them and uh, uh, improve their yield improve their in income uh, uh, here uh, along with also targeting uh, the the increase of sugarcane area in the command uh, areas by identifying the right kind of uh, let's say soil soil moisture uh, farm you know behavior etc uh, are other places where we see uh, a lot of uh, uh, you know intervention potential that can improve the sugar industry obviously there is a lot more for example sugar is one of those zero waste crops right so uh, you are able to predict harvest you are able to connect the farmer to even you know uh, more end users of the different uh, intermediary pro products especially for biogas etc those are also certain benefits where uh, definitely te digital technologies like this uh, comes into place uh, thank you pradeep ji before i go to my conclusion remarks uh, are there any questions from the audience? Uh, SPTG. Thank you. My question is to Madam Ruchika. Basically, I mean, I am now confining my question only to sugarcane. So, in sugarcane, there are basically three aspects for the estimation. One is the acreage, then is the production that is and then third, finally, is the sugar production which is likely to come out of that. So, I mean, the most important ultimately is the sugar production for all the policy decisions as uh, uh, Mr. Srinivas has mentioned. So, you, you mentioned that there's almost 99% accuracy in the acreage of sugar cane determination. Or 90%. 90. Sorry? 90. 90%. Yeah, 90%. So, Acreage is relatively easy to estimate as compared to yield yes. or then sugar production. So let's talk of yield. How do you propose to estimate yield and consequently sugar cane production in a more scientific or in a more accurate manner? And then we go on to the sugar production, which has been a function of recovery, depending on weather conditions. So, uh, see, uh, I told you two things for the area. It's 90% is about the remote sensing capability. But uh, side by side, we are doing the digital crop survey, which is the 100% thing. So we know on what pl plot, what is grown. So that is another thing, and remote sensing capability is the another thing. So this is for the area. For the yield also, similarly, we do have two, three methods. One is that crop cutting experiment, which is scientifically designed. And on that, we select a certain number of uh, villages for each crop in the each state, depending upon the area of uh, that uh, state for that particular crop. So villages are selected. And in the villages, crop cutting experiments are conducted. On the basis of that crop cutting experiment, district level, uh, we do have the district level uh, yield estimates. So that process, we have uh, used some technology to see whether uh, how the crop cutting experiment is conducted. We do have that particular plot where the crop cutting experiment has been conducted. And we can see what is the yield of that plot on which the crop cutting experiment was conducted. This is one way. So that's how we are improving the estimate based on the field data as regard to the yield, one part. Second part, we are uh, simultaneously, we are trying to uh, do that through modeling as uh, our representative from Isma, he also explained that we are uh, simultaneously we are develop doing this through models. So that also for that also we have collaborated with uh, uh, that SAC, uh, Space Application Center Ahmedabad and ICAR also have some models. So we have started uh, investing on those models also so that we have another source of uh, information regarding yield through models. So we do have two things. The data on the basis of crop cutting experiment, which is basically the field. From the field, we are generating the, uh, doing the crop cutting experiment and getting the yield estimate. And secondly, through models. So these two, three initiatives will bring us the more uh, accurate yield estimation. So area coupled with yield will give a good uh, production estimation for the sugarcane. And as you rightly mentioned, then sugar comes after that. 
So on the basis of sugar cane production, you can estimate the sugar production. Uh, my question is uh, to Dr. Anusha. Ma'am, you are uh, digitizing uh, the farm and the yield, everything. But do you have any model wherein uh, the farmers, uh, the farmer will come to know, uh, like uh, a kind of a passbook where he comes to know ki how much is his input cost and how much he has earned? Because if you ask a farmer, Bhai sahab, aapne kitna lagaya aur kitna mila, to bolta hai ki mujhe dar lagta hai. He doesn't calculate. So there should be a mechanism wherein the farmer should understand ki, suppose he has two acres of land, so this is my input cost, this is my labor cost, and this is what I have earned out of it. So do you have a kind of a model for this? Yeah, no, that's a really good question. And actually as part of our advisory ha app, we have that as a feature, a passbook. Right? So you tell him how much input to apply, to seeds or you know, fertilizer, crop care. And once he does that and he logs it, he also gets an estimate of the amount he has spent, right? Similarly, when he logs the output, based on that, he can see his whole passbook in terms of what are the input costs, what are the mechanization costs, if he's used rental equipment, what is the cost of that, and then what is the output that he has been able to earn, right? So that's how we're able to prove the, improve in, uh, you know, the improvement in income per acre. So tracking that is a very important part of the whole process, actually. Yeah, I think... Uh in the interest of time, we will have to conclude the session. Um, I'll just make my other questions anyway. I think during tea time, we can have it with the panelists. Uh, there are two points I would like to make uh, in my conclusion. One is, uh, obviously, the digital tools and applications uh, need to be more cost effective. There is no second thought on that. I just want to share one of our experiences over the last five years. We talked about morning, Mr. Tamakji was talking about more crop per drop. We did an uh, experiment on autonomous irrigation. The plant decides its own irrigation. Instead of the normal flood irrigation, we have been doing it for the last four or five years. The water consumption has come down by 65% and the yield has gone up by 20%. The biggest challenge is the investment cost. For a fragmented land holding like in India, it is extremely difficult to justify to the farmer that you have to invest so many lakhs of rupees to get these benefits. So the important learning is uh, it's not enough to have a very good technology which saves. Ultimately, it should be implementable and affordable to the farmer. That is one conclusion. Second point, I thought, uh, since eminent uh, set of panelists and eminent audience is sitting over here, this has always been close to my heart. I thought this is the right forum to place it. The amount of arable land available in the India as well as in the world is going to be the same or it is going to go down the urbanization and so many other things. That means there is going to be increased pressure on yield improvement and recovery improvement if it is sugarcane, and it is applicable for other crops as well. The important point here to note is what we are going to do. Today we are talking about data assimilation and then trying to use the data for estimating certain things. For example, let us take the yield and recovery. Yield is influenced by at least three to four parameters. Recovery may be close to 10, 15 parameters. So in general, we talk that how to improve yield, micronutrient, or you are going to do uh, wider row spacing, or single bud seedling. But what is required is, in my plot, what should I do to improve my yield and recovery? That means what we need to do is the plot-specific prescription. That's what I call it as. For my plot, an app is required because so many data points are going to be available in the next two to three years. How are we going to establish a correlation and regression through multivariate analysis across variables? So that, I, as a typical app, today I put a, my body uh, weight, my height, I get a BMI. What is that I need to put in an app to get to know what are the two top two variables I need to work on to improve my yield or to improve my recovery. This has to be uh, plot specific. I think that is the way the real convergence of all these data benefits will come only when we do an application or an algorithm development. I am sure we are not the people who are going to sit and do the algorithms. People like Pratit Ji and the other people who are going to, the startups have to work on, not necessarily for sugarcane. The farmer should know what are the top two levers he should control
to improve his yield or to improve his recovery. That's the only way uh, is my thought process. Plot-specific prescription should be the future. All this convergence should lead us to plot-specific uh, prescription. With that thought, uh, I would like to thank uh, the ISO as well as our JS and the Government of India for giving us an opportunity to be here and sharing our thoughts along with all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for that insightful session. What lies ahead? Taking on these learnings forward and building on the work that has already been done. Thank you very much. Your expertise and perspectives have shed light on crucial advancements and challenges in the sector. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll now be requesting uh, Joint Secretary Shrigar Shri Ashwini Srivastav to kindly present tokens of uh, appreciation and gratitude to each of our panelists here today, beginning with the moderator. Mr. Suresh, thank you very much for adding value and insights, sharing your insights with us today. Thank you, Mr. Pratip Basu. Thank you, Ms. Ruchika Gupta. Can we have a louder applause? Ladies and gentlemen, we need some energy. Thank you, Dr. Anusha. Thank you, Mr. Deepak Balani. Thank you very much. So we'll join hands for each of our panelists for this wonderful session that we just heard on digitization of sugar sector bringing synergy among stakeholders. So after the group picture, we'll be moving on to a talk on trade patterns.